Christ recovering blood. It kind of concluded um, to us not taking a lot of breaks. Yeah. So a, a lot of times are the time where we would take a break, like, you know, Christmas or summer. We or, ended up working. We ended up working still. So we were still working throughout the semester, and then we were then pushed to work some more during our vacation time. And though in the moment it was very tiring to keep working, I realized when we finally got a break, I could not stop working. It felt odd yes. to not work. Yes. So then I just was, kept finding something to do, finding something to do. It's almost like I got used to being overworked, which sounds terrible. Mm -hmm. But it, that was the truth. And you know, I ended up doing more than what I should, and then I ended up crashing so violently. Mm -hmm. um, I, I ended up having burnout. And when I, could, when I have burnout, it's bad. When I have burnout, I cannot work on anything. I cannot think of anything. It seems like all my skills have disappeared. And then when you work on burnout and you find that all your skills are kind of like fizzled, mm -hmm. then you get frustrated and you're angry. So then I told myself like, okay, you're only not working for a month. Stop. You're not working on anything art related because all of my hobbies are art related. I do arts craft. I knit. I wow. draw. I paint. I do. So when people say like, what are your hobbies besides art? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so then, so then I had to push myself like, okay, let's find some hobbies that have nothing to do with art. And so I went to Japanese lessons and said, like, I'm gonna learn my language. Yes, yes, yes. So that's what I've been doing this month. Then I will continue on here because I think it's really important to have something definitely away from work. Because yes. art is still work, even though it's a hobby for me. So. I don't want art to be something that I end up hating because that is something I love to do, you know. So that's why I'm taking a, a step back from art related stuff and trying not to put it on other things that I like. So, like, enjoying myself going to the beach, hanging out with my friends, and stuff like that. Um, probably I would work on one or two things, but I'm really trying to get back to me in this moment because you can get consumed by your work and then try not to do that, you know, because it's not going to be good for me and it's not going to be good for me any longer. Future me is probably going to look back and be like, yo, you should have probably slowed down, you should take a break, you know. So I really find that this time that I'm taking to get my thoughts together and, you know, see where I want to go with my career is very important. And working on your mental health and gathering yourself before you lose yourself is a very important step for working and going forward with your work in order to produce work that you love. Because you don't want to produce work in a stressful environment where you feel stressed, everyone around you is stressed, you know, and then you end up not doing as well as you know, so I'm working on recovery. You know, we, we, we have our degrees now, so that's, that's no problem. But yeah, the, that whole experience was tough. Um, and because, you know, you can't do everything online, especially for the fine arts students. Yes. Because we were graphic design students, so it was easier on us to do online stuff, but for the fine arts students, they had trouble. Yeah, all this stuff, so they had to go buy stuff, especially when it was locked down. Because there was lockdown, it, it became a challenge within itself, and then also, you know, money and things. So, yes. Um, but yeah, and then, you know, we also had to be taught new stuff, yes. like programs, and we couldn't get that done, unfortunately. Yes, because we didn't have access to the computers and software. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and when we did, then yeah, it was, it was the, more conflict there so we there, there there are some stuff that we missed out on um, but you know we're we're graphic students we're artists we'll figure our way out um, but yeah and since we are going in that we're gonna definitely figure our way out there so we'll just learn everything on the spot <laughs> but yeah um, to say it was a good experience would be it was a good experience but in terms of you know Academically, it probably was not the best experience, but 
you know, in terms of my class, my, my class is a beautiful class. I, I love the whole year. I love the personalities that I was able to meet and um, just talk with for two years. You know, we've become very extremely comfortable with each other. Because <laughs> I think we just bonded over all of the hardships that we had. So, yeah, we've, we've become a very close-knit kind of class. So, yeah, I, that I will definitely take away. The niche for money um, people who want to graduate from UCC visual arts programs. The niche for you most likely to fall in is commercial art. Mm. That's Taurus art. No. Commercial art is fine because you know that's what gets you the money, you know. Exactly. But I'm not a fan of commercial art. There's too many um, landscapes of bachelor. Um, yes, exactly. <laughs> There's only I could call out right now, oh, Cherry Tree Hill. Yeah. I I don't need to like add to that collection. Like I wanna know like I know I wanna know what's going on with you. You know? So whether that be of a portrait of yourself or you know, it can be something abstract, like explore, I wanna see more exploration. But yeah, the the niche here is tourist art, commercial art. Thanks to sell to four hundred things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say that there really, if there is, I would love someone to bring it to me or show it to me. But I don't believe there is really a niche for um, our graduate art per se because, um, for instance, as we look around this room, there's several different kinds of artwork that we see present. Right? It's not just paisage or landscape. You know. So beautiful. Yes, many different pieces, you know, but one thing that I would say in Barbados is that where art is concerned, I don't believe that we would be really able to prosper from it unless we get like a big commission either from government or some individual. So um, you would either find yourself in one of two extremes. Either you would find yourself, I remember a gentleman that used to do paintings and drawings, he would be selling them. Um, uh, to the bridge in town, right? Or it would be another extreme, such as um, as well known as the graphic artist uh, Rash Paul or Vaughn Hall or one of those, right? But there's no in between because I do not believe that our economy really permits people to um, have money that they can shell out on artists' work to support them. Right, so I don't believe there's really a niche in Barbados per se because even Vauxhall, most of his plants come from overseas and a lot of what he does is already marketed towards us Barbadians and if it is those Barbadians are mostly like upper to middle class Barbadians who would probably purchase his work, right? So in terms of our art, we would probably have to go overseas to find clients in order to be able to make a living off of our art, you know, because as you look around the Caribbean, every single artist that you know has a main job. Their creative side is never their main job. If you are in Barbados, you would, I do not believe you would be able to sustain yourself by your art only. That will only be possible if you go to like the States, Canada, or outside of Barbados, you know, because as Caroline said, most people just like to see the tourist art and stuff like that. Not every single individual is looking for tourist art, but that's the main thing that we sell. And that's not forcing the, what everyone is interested in, you know, because you could get frustrated because you're tired of seeing all these paisages and painting them. You want to paint something else, but that's not what the market in Barbados is looking for. If you look at Ganji or the artworks that's selling in Cape Shepherd, you would never see a piece interpreting someone's emotions or anything of the sort. You will mostly see um, posters and different stuff uh, depicting a typical paisage 
in Barbados or somewhere like that, but you want to really see something interpreting the emotions or what's going on inside the mind of a Barbadian, right? So that side of Barbados is already fully fleshed out in terms of the art market, but um, I would say Barbados has potential, right? It's just that it will take time. illustration in the first place because it really does keep a child engaged in reading because I don't like reading. Yes. <laughs> so like I, and I'm not embarrassed to say like oh does the book have pictures and by pictures I don't mean like you know those toy pictures I mean like actual illustrations I'm like do to give me a good you know um picture image of what's going on Right? But for children's books, you know, especially British illustration. And um, I, I, I don't know if you're familiar with like older British illustration in children's mm -hmm. books. Like the ones that you'll find in those books. I can't remember the name, but like uh, Enid Blyton books? Yes, Enid Blyton and then other other illustrations. I really enjoy looking at that maybe because I've had a lot of those in my childhood. But yeah, I, I want to be able to make children's books, and then not only of any story, like, you know, um, but I want to make Caribbean stories. Yes. I want to make Caribbean stories fun and not sound educational, because when you read, edu when you read, like, Caribbean stories or, like, on folklore, it always seems so educational, and mm -hmm. this is coming from my perspective, because in secondary school, we had to read prose, which is, you know, a bunch of... Caribbean author written short stories and I'm like you know this is a really good story but it's not that exciting yeah. you know and I want to be able to make learning about like folklore I'm really interested in folklore Caribbean folklore I want to be able to make folklore look fun and you know have kids interact with these characters because I feel like that act of storytelling which is so like strong in Caribbean history in general, I think that's fading away and that's, I, I want to be able to bring it back into the new generation and have these kids talk about, you know, all the old hag and, you know, make games about the old hag because they read it in a book somewhere mm -hmm. or, you know, um, um, I think the god is Papa Bois. Papa Bois. Papa Bois. He lives in the forest. Not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll fact check that. But like, <laughs> but yeah, there, there's a lot of folklore stories I enjoy, and I want to be able to make like a whole series of children's books, and then also like you know just you know cute little learn how to read books. I want to make little nighttime poetry books where you can read it to your kids on the night, have them listen to the Caribbean stories, and be proud of you know where they came from because I feel like I'm, like, you know, other children's story books are fine, but you know, they're all like, you know, based in another country and not really where they're from. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the fairy tales are based in Europe or maybe stories from America. And I'm like, yeah, those are great, but like, what are the stories they're telling the kids here that are from here? And there's not a lot, and I want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, I would say that after graduation, I really do hope to find myself overseas to push my art further and to also um, find different opportunities, you know, for my art and myself because um, I really hope to branch out into the graphic design and stuff. I will be doing my art still, but I think that's something I need to take my time to do. You know, because I don't want it to feel like another assignment or homework or anything like that because I don't want to end up hating it. So, um, I would find, I would really like to 
um, become the apprentice of those print makers that I had mentioned, Marie Pavinen at M Capito on Instagram. I would really like to reach out to them and really ask them if I could be able to become their apprentice, you know, so I could learn under them and study under them and stuff. And then um, eventually I really do hope to um, have my own little studio where I do my work and then, um, you know, sell my commissions and stuff. I would also like to print my artwork on t-shirts, you know, I made like a profit from screen printing on them, you know, and I will also like to um, be able to say that, okay, I'm at a stage where I am comfortable enough where I could make my art my main source of income, you know, so um, that's why I'm going to graphic design now, so I can focus on fine art later. Because I do know that as I grow and as I learn about more stuff, I would be able to let people in and show them my worldview from my art, you know, and they will be able to benefit from that because not only would they be getting my interpretation as an as a artist who immigrated to a larger country, they will also be seeing my interpretation of the world as a Caribbean person living in that way. It has to be something that you love. It, it, it can't be something where you say, maybe I want to do this, maybe I want to do that. No, 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 no. You have to be sure that you want this because though we talked about, you know, it was tough for us, we had a pandemic. So, but like, but despite the pandemic, before that even started, it was already tough to begin with. So. Um, it has to be something that you love and that you sure of because it is definitely a mental thing to do this because you're going to have to put out a lot of work and a lot of work in a short period of time. So, it's, it's, oh, and quickly. So, a lot of work in a short period of time um, and multiple works at one time. So, yeah, you, you definitely have to want this because your your creativity is going to be challenged and I, I want that everyone is able to keep up with that and I don't want anyone to struggle so definitely look within yourself and like do I really want to be an artist and if the answer is yes then go right ahead. You're perfect. <laughs> well first I would say focus on you. As selfish as it may sound Focus on yourself first, right? Put you first, right? Um, do not come into um, the degree program thinking that it's a competition because then um, you will end up feeling worse than you should because it's meant to be like a fun learning experience, you know? So like, if you just feel like you need to one up one person or something like that, you're not gonna end up having fun or enjoying yourself, right? And creating the best work that you can because you're so busy comparing yourself and your work to other people, right? So I would say, focus on yourself. Don't compare your work to others, you know? Do learn from others, but don't compare your work. Because when you start to compare your work, is when your morale will start to go down and then um, you won't be working 100%. You won't be giving yourself or like your assignment 100% of what you know you can do, right? So focus on yourself, don't compare your work to others. And if you can, right, make at least one friend, right? I'm not saying go get a group of friends or whatever, but make at least one friend. You know, even if you're not close to that person, make at least one friend because that person will be able to help you and you will be able to help them, you know, and if you might miss something, they help you and whatever, you know. So make one friend, but don't make that your one focus because then you're taking away from your work, right? Um, and also be prepared. So don't stress yourself and just remember what your goal is and what you came here to do. All right, that will be my advice to any future student.